So for this one, we're going to create a middleware for an API key route. The hypothetical use case would be, let's say you had an administration route for creating users or deleting users. You don't want just anyone to be able to hit that route. You want only authenticated users that have a special secret. So in this case, they've got an API key that you've generated, you store it in secret manager, and they use it from uh, Insomnia on their laptop or something along those lines. Quickly flesh out the Jin middleware for the API key. This is going to be very similar to what we've done in the past, but this time we're going to hand in a secret ID string. And this is going to be something that we store within Secret Manager. So we'll first create a script here that can generate a new private key or API key secret. So we'll call this create API key. This is useful if you just want to keep remaking API keys. So we're going to use uh, open SSL in the script to generate a random string. So here we use open SSL, rand, and then we give it a base64 flag, and then we want 32 characters. So we're going to save that to the secrets variable, and then we're going to echo that secret out there. And probably need to add execution rights to it. And then we can run it and we'll get an API key which we can put into Secrets Manager. To do that, we'll, we can use the gcloud command line. So first we use the minus n flag here to ensure that we don't get that trailing new line with the echo command. And then we use gcloud secrets and then we use create the secrets name, which in this case I'm going to call it debater of math API key. This might be user admin key or something like that if you are going with a hypothetical use case. And then we set the replication policy to automatic, terminate the new line, and then we set the data file as uh, standard input. So in this case, because we're echoing into standard output, then the gcloud command is consuming standard input, and that's what that little hyphen there means. So if you go ahead and run that from the command line, we should eventually see that pair within Secrets Manager, which we do. There it is. So next thing we're going to do is create a package that's called Secrets, and that's going to be in a Secrets directory within the internal directory. And we're going to create a function here called get secrets. So that's going to take secret ID string, which is going to be that key. So in my case, it was debater of math API key and it's going to return the secret itself or an error. So we're going to use secret manager dot new client to get the secret manager client. And then we're going to start building a function called get project number. Now, this is important because you can't actually use the project ID to get a secret. I don't know if this is another layer of security or not, but you have to use something called cloud resource manager uh, dot new service. And then you can kind of pass it your project ID and then it will return your project number. And then you use this number to, to create a fully qualified name from which you can get the secret from. So you can see here that I'm using os.get environment variable uh, Google Cloud project. So that's going to be provided by App Engine. And then we invoke our get project number here from within the get secret function. And we'll use that to create the fully qualified name. So uh, we create this pointer to the secret manager access secret version request and then you see the name here is constructed using format.printf project slash then that project number and then it's secrets and then the secret id and then versions and then one so if you overwrite the secret the version will increment now we utilize that access request using client.access secret version and we return the result once we set that up, we swap over to the other function and we invoke the get secret, providing the secret ID. And then we just check that secret against the key that's been provided within the header. So if the header key matches, then obviously we let them through. And if it doesn't, we don't. Before we can test this route, we have to use the middleware. So use api.use and then mauth.api key, auth api key and then the API key name, which we're going to create a constant for. If you look closely, I've actually named my API key incorrectly. I've called it debator. Uh, so now we want to use Insomnia again to create an API key route. 
and check that the URL matches the gin endpoint. So API slash users slash delete. Now I just tested this and uh, it was falling through anyway. So it's really important to test your routes to fail first. And in this case, I use C dot abort with status JSON rather than you saw before, maybe C dot error. Uh, that's, I believe the proper way to do it, but you're supposed to use an error handler middleware to catch the errors and kind of abort. So uh, we've not done that. So in this case, just use that C dot abort statement. And then when you send that, Insomnia requests, you should get a 401 unauthorized because you don't have the API key. We're not providing in the header yet. Just notice this is not delete. So let's make that delete really quickly just to match the endpoint or at least it's, its purpose. And then put in the UID. So as a path parameter here, so copy from the version delete up there and then we'll put it in here and make it UID and the, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice little log statement beautiful going back to insomnia we're going to use the x api key header the case is important here and then we're uh, delete the actual one and we paste the api key that we put into secret manager there if you you've lost that go back to secret manager you can get it by going to versions and then showing secret and uh, 404 that's because we're not adding a path parameter. So let's try that again. And of course it's not deployed. So let's do that first. So now that we're deployed, we want to execute using insomnia, hit the send and we've got to 401. Head over to app engine, go to logs to do a little debugging. Let's see what's wrong. And we can see that the cron's getting hit a few times but it failed to get the secret. So the most probable cause of this is that we don't actually have permissions to go and access the secrets manager. So we need to go over to IAM and you need to update the app engine service account. So if you don't know much about IAM, you uh, have service accounts, which is you associate with resources. So in this case, it's this one here for me, which is appspot. Blah, blah, blah. Now you need to be careful because there are two that look very similar. Uh, I think there's a Firebase one as well. And then you need to explicitly add the secret manager accessor role. This is, uh, I guess, surprising given that you would think editor has all access, but it doesn't have access to the secrets manager. So you need to explicitly add that one. Save the permissions. And then I don't know how long this takes up today, but I think it's pretty quick. And then you can probably run again pretty soon after that. So, so back in Insomnia, click send and we've got a success. So great. Uh, that's, that's actually pretty good that we got to see how IAM and logging works. It's always fun to experiment in the world of debugging. And then if we change the API key, it fails and we put it back and it's successful. So that shows that it is actually using the key itself and verifying against secret manager. So awesome.